welcome back. So I'm just going to turn on screencast keys so that you can see the buttons I press. So it's been recommended that I do a video on PBR textures. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is going to delete this light, delete this cube, center my cursor with shift C and add in a plane. This is going to be the base of where we put our material, but I'm going to tab in. I'm going to size it up to about there. You can make this as big as or as small as you like. I'm also going to bring the camera down. Um, so I use numpad um, O and then shift plus the tilde key. And I'll just position the camera roughly to be able to look at the material as I make it. Next up, because I want to use a displacement on this, I want to have enough geometry to make the displacement look good. So I'm going to subdivide it. And because I've already tested this, I know that I want roughly 10 and then one additional. I'm also going to want a multi-resolution, but I'm not going to touch that yet. I will use that later. So finally, I'm going to hit O to go back into the uh, camera view, and I'm going to click on shading. And O to go back into camera view, but in the shading screen. I'm going to bring the cam this up just to make it enough room to be able to properly see everything else. So with this selected, I'm going to hit new. Now I'll have by default the material output. So anything plugged into this will decide what is on our final plane. And a principled BSDF shader, which can be changed color of our object. Um, doesn't actually matter what we set this to for the now. But we need to plug things in to different parts of this shader in order to get as realistic an item as we can. In previous versions, we would have had to work out all of the things like free now, which you don't have to work out now, which is perfect. But the first thing we're going to do is we'll just decide the color of this object. So I'm going to use Shift A to add a texture. I'm going to add an image texture, which I'm going to put here. There are a couple of different options again on here, but we're just going to hit open, find the textures that we want. And the texture I'm using is a ground texture, which I will link in the description. But we'll have five textures in this, and they're all going to look slightly different. So we've got the color, the ambient occlusion, the displacement, the normal, and the roughness. For this one is the color, so we're going to add the color map. And all we're going to do is drag this little color bit into the base color. And then once it loads, we'll get this. I'm going to hit the rendered view. And I don't really like the uh, additional light we have, so I'm going to go onto world and bring the strength of the background to zero. Now it's obviously black. And that's because we don't have a light at all. So I'm going to go shift A, light, and then I'm going to add a sun in. And what I'm going to do is just add that and rotate it a little so that we've got a light. Perfect. But now we don't have any additional lighting, so we're only going to have the light from that sun. Uh, as you can see currently, I'm now still on the world thing, so I'm going to go back from world back to object. And click on our object so we get back to here. It looks very flat and dull and boring at the moment. So I'm going to go and duplicate this. Just going to keep everything nice and organized so that it's easy to see, use and see. Uh, this is currently or the color because we duplicated that one. Uh, the advantage of that is when we click open image to open a new one, we're already back in the same folder. So next up, we're going to be adding the roughness. What the roughness texture does is it decides where is shiny and where isn't. So on this, um, we've actually got some rocks in here. We've got some dirt in here. Uh, the rocks are going to be a little bit shinier than the dirt because it's quite dry dirt. So different parts will reflect light slightly differently. And this is exactly what the roughness texture does. So we're going to attach that into roughness. I'm going to change it from sRGB to non-color because the roughness is a non-color texture. And that's that one done. Next one we want is the normal map. What the normal map does, which is this one, is a slightly different color. All a normal map does 
is it to show tells us exactly where the highs and the lows are of the objects. So I'll do that again, but I'm going to use Shift A. I need to add a vector normal map. I'm going to attach that into there and attach the color into the color. You'll notice a difference immediately, and it'll be way too strong currently. But I need to change it from sRGB back to non-color. And I also I'm going to want to turn it down because it's obviously currently very very strong. Uh, I feel about about there seems about good. So we've got some shadows in on areas here, and we can always tweak this more as we go along. It's currently looking a bit flat still, however which is where the next bit we're going to do. Now there are a couple of different ways of doing displacements. Um, you can add the displacement in this material node if you want. My preferred manner is I'm going to go back to modifiers where we added this multi res and I'm going to go add modifier displace. Uh, that will add a displacement modifier onto this. Next up we need to decide how we're going to displace. So I'm going to go onto this bottom one, see where it says displace here. There won't be any textures, but that's fine. I'm going to click new, open, go back to where I have the other textures, and I want this black and white one here that says displacement, and be ready for it to suddenly change and look disgusting. It's about what we expected, but I'm going to change on this displacement modifier now. Uh, it is important that multi resolution is above it. It shouldn't even allow you to. Oh, it does. But you want the multi resolution to be above it. Um, currently, it's not actually um, subdividing at all, so that's fine. But texture coordinates, I want that to change to UV because we have unwrapped it. Um, you'll also notice now that there is some bump to it, but it's very strong. Uh, we've got a lot of bump, and they're very big bumps, and we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tone this down. Uh, as I've already tested it, I know that the number I want is about 0.2, which despite looking very, very tame at the moment, the reason for that is we don't have enough geometry because that's all the geometry we have, remember. So if I hit subdivide, you'll notice it changing very quickly if I get a good view here. And every time I hit subdivide, if I bring this down, every time I hit subdivide, it's going to get more and more the way we want it to look. You can start to see that individual rocks are starting to be brought out a bit. And this will slow your computer down as you do it. Um, but you can also see that we kind of have some weird artifacts where we can see the, the bumps. To get rid of that, we're going to go Object, Shade Smooth. And then once it's finished doing that, uh, you will get little freezes while you do this. Our object already looks much better. So I can actually have a look around on this and have a good look at it. Um, we're currently in Eevee, I believe, rather than... Yep, yeah. But if I go into Cycles, and give it a second to load, because Cycles is a lot slower than Eevee is, We've got it again. Uh, I might actually need an additional multi res drop, but obviously, we are quite close in at the moment. Um, you'll notice there'll be shadows on one side because we've only got one light, and there'll be no shadows on the other. But if you just have a look, it does look like a very realistic material. Uh, the closer you get, obviously, the more texture resolution, higher texture resolution you're going to want. So, depending on how close you wish to be to your material. I'm going to go about here just to cut off that edge bit there. Perfect. So next up we've got all that. There's one final map that we can use. Just bring this up a bit so that we can have a little bit more room to play with. And that is Sorry, when my computer starts freaking out. I'm actually going to disable the multi-resolution, which you can do just by clicking there. Which will just flatten the object out again. Um, all that's done is 
means that this displacement doesn't have as much to work with again. But it'll take time to actually catch up, but that's fine. As you can see, it's starting to look flat again. Or should be. Oh, we seem to have two now. My bad. So this is the one we're actually using. It's because I press Shift D. Cool. So if I select this, I can now un unselect the, the multi res. As you can ignore that bit. I do apologize. That was me messing up. It's because I accidentally used Shift D and I have my mouse over the viewport rather than in this bit. So next up, we're going to add the ambient occlusion mode, which is this one. Now, let me go back into rendered view because I want to better look at it. What we want to do now is a mix RGB node. I'm going to add that one in there. Bring the color in. So, now, ambient occlusion, you don't want it too strong. Uh, so if I currently, if I just reconnect it to here like this, you can see how that is. If I bring it to here. Like that, like that. Uh, I actually want it on multiply. And I want to have a little bit more control because if you look at it like this, you can see it does look better. It's just a case of trying to get it perfect. So if you add search and then a ramp, uh, we can actually set this to non-color data. With this ramp node, you can have even more control over it. So I can bring the black up, which as you can see is starting to bring more bits out. Or I can bring it back down and bring the white down and then you'll get it looking fatter. So you can, with this color ramp node, you really can have a lot of control over your textures. Let's shift it there because I really like this rock here. Brilliant. So I actually do just want a flat multiplier with a factor of zero. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want. But this is our PBR setup. So I'm going to quickly just go over so you can have a look. Um, I can now mess with this a little bit more if I want. So I might actually want it a little bit closer to one. Um, right about there. And I'm going to turn the multi-res back on so it'll freeze the temporarily. But I want to have a look at it with its displacement as well. Beautiful. So it looks almost real. So it's actually got things that bump up and stick out. Um, perfect. Uh, if I wanted to do it as close up as I've been getting, like up here, I really should have used an 8K texture, but I thought 4K would be enough for this. Um, if Most of the time, you will not have the camera this close to the ground, and for good reason. But that's literally all you've got to do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to render this out now, and then I'm going to show you guys it so that you can all have a look. And I hope you wish you luck, and I hope that you can replicate and get similar results. Thank you for watching.